Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to this week's episode of Friday on the Turntable. Today I'm going to be talking about a band that I feel is sorely underappreciated and sometimes overlooked, and that is Gene Loves Jezebel. This is their 1983 debut, Promise. It came out in the UK on the Situation 2 label and here in the United States out on Geffen. Now the band uh, formed back in 1980 by two twin brothers of Wales, Jay and Michael Aston. They released their first single which you can see back here. Uh, this was Shaving My Neck, uh, one of my favorite songs of that time period. And, uh, and then shortly after they uh, put out their debut, um, but on that, out, on that EP single, they had Julian Reagan who played bass and she later went on to form the band All About Eve. Uh, but she left the band prior to them recording Promise, which um, was produced by John Brand. He did uh, produce the go-betweens, Aztec Camera, the cult and uh, many many other things uh, if you're unfamiliar with the sound of Gene Les Jezebel a lot of people know them from their uh, from the probably their biggest single which came out on their 1986 album discover the song desire which is a huge song MTV and everything but for me my absolute favorite uh, album of theirs is their debut album it's raw it has uh, the, the sound of the guitars the way the guitars are layered in just this jagged shimmering sound, uh, the really intense bass line, some tribal drums, and then of course the Aston's vocals are really unique sounding. If you've heard Gene Loves Jezebel, you, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you'll have to check out the links below uh, to get a sample if you're unfamiliar. Um, so this album rarely gets mentioned when people talk about early goth rock, you know, often uh, in, in well-deserved bands like uh, Bauhaus, uh, Susie and the Banshees, uh, Sisters of Mercy, Christian Death, but a lot of people tend to overlook uh, this album from that time period and just the sound of it for me and the influence that I think it has, although it doesn't get talked about much, but I hear it in bands like, for those of you uh, that know Perry Farrell's first band, Psycom, when I listen to that, um, that five song EP of theirs, I always think of Promise, the production of it and the sound of it is really indicative of uh, Gene Loves Jezebel. Um, this uh, promise yielded in a roundabout way three singles, one of them being Bruises, which I have a uh, seven inch of here with the uh, non-album track Punch Drunk, also on that Situation 2 label. And it's actually a different version that appeared on the album. Uh, then there's a single for the track Screaming for Emmeline, and then also the instrumental track Influenza had a later single that came out with vocals on it. But the version of Influenza on here uh, it, it's really interesting this it, it, it's preceded by on side two by a track called bread from heaven which is essentially an acapella vocal uh, with some really uh, soundscapes below it and then influenza kicks in and it's got a tribal drum part and there's all these cool textures almost like a vibraphone on it and acoustic guitar some lead guitar and a little haunting almost like a vocal-esque keyboard line that runs through it which is a really cool track my three favorite songs on this one, actually I'm going to throw four at you. Uh, Upstairs, which I think is a great track. Bruises, which I just showed you the single for. Pop Tarantula, really cool. It has this moment in there where the vocals just creep in really loudly and they just jump out at the speaker um, on the word pop. And it reminds me of Iggy Pop's uh, China Girl when the vocals get so loud and so upfront and just jump out of the speaker at you and almost distort. And then perhaps even my favorite song on the album is Shower Me with Brittle Punches, which is on uh, side two. But uh, a seriously, a great album. And this one is not very difficult to find. So if you do come across it, definitely pick it up. I want to show you a couple other things. Um, back in, sometime in the mid 2000s, I think it was, uh, Beggar's Banquet which was the parent company of uh, Situation 2, I believe, they put out a deluxe CD version of it, which had, um, it has extensive liner notes in there. Uh, Jay Aston gives a little di uh, dis or discourse there on the recording of it. It has pictures of the band, all the lyrics to the songs, credits, um, so you actually know who's playing on everything. Uh, one of the things about Gene Loves Jezebel is their history is a little confusing uh, since the brothers both have went their separate ways several times and they both have formed different offshoots of Gene Loves Jezebel so a lot of times you really don't know which album you're actually, the later albums of, of which which offshoot it actually is. 
and then it has a second disc with um, with the EP on it, and uh, it's the single versions of the songs and uh, various B sides and uh, other songs not on the album. Um, my band Audra got to play with Gene Loves Jezebel when the brothers reunited for the first time back in 1997, and it was their 15th anniversary of their first release. So uh, we played, and I, and I pulled out the flyer. I had to dig deep through the archives here. But this was the flyer um, that was made by a friend of ours named Shane. And uh, you can see Audra there in the middle. And it was at a place called the Nile Theater. It was March 20th, 1997. Uh, we were promoting an, a little EP back then, a cassette EP called Unhappy Till the End. And um, we got to hang out with the two brothers before the, uh, before the show. And I remember we were sitting out in the car, or on the car eating, and they walked up and they hung out with us. And I asked them if they were to be performing Shaving My Neck. And he seemed very, they seemed very surprised that people knew that song. And then they actually sang uh, to me and my brother a little a cappella version of Shaving My Neck, which was very cool. Uh, then I got to see them play probably a couple years after that, um, and it was uh, it was one of the brothers' bands, I can't remember which, but they performed at a little venue in Tempe at the time. I think it was called, oh my god, I don't even remember. It was on Mill Avenue in Southern. There's a Zia Records there right now. But my memory of that show is they were doing their encore, and they were performing the song Desire, which I talked about earlier, and right in the middle it hit whatever one o'clock or whatever the cutoff time was for them to stop serving alcohol and the sound guy just killed the PA and right halfway through the song just the song stopped which was incredibly disrespectful disrespectful of the venue um, and then another time later on uh, we got to perform with Michael's version of Gene Loves Jezebel back in I think that was 2003 at a venue in San Diego called Kane's uh, and we got to talk with Michael that night and he was a super nice guy um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to touch on on this one. No, I think that's about it, guys. But Gene Loves Jezebel Promise, if you see this, pick it up. Uh, other albums I can recommend in the catalog. This was their second one. Uh, this is Immigrant, which uh, shares a, a similar sound to Promise, uh, although I do prefer Promise, as I said earlier. And then the third album, Discover. I have several other albums in, their catalog, in the catalog, and there's some great tracks um, that follow Discover, but my wheelhouse of Gene Les Jezebel is those first the first two albums into the third album as well but uh, anyways guys uh, curious to hear from you guys who out there is a Gene Les Jezebel fan if you guys have any stories of seeing them live uh, I'd really love to hear it so thanks for watching I will talk to you guys soon be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can keep uh, keep in touch with my videos thanks a lot